to invite you to challenge yourself, slow down slightly, and just think about what we're going to tell you over the next few minutes. There's an awesome vastness in the universe. We want to give you a, just a taste of the beauty and the power of what's out there. Take a look with us. You know, statistically, I know it's it's hard to get you late teen, 20 somethings who, who cruise YouTube by the millions worldwide out there to just lock on to any video for more than 30 seconds or so that we really believe has content, substance, and more importantly, critical life information. You know, and just maybe, just maybe, a few of you are going to find new meaning and impact for your lives. And you'll be the ones that'll finish the series. In this wake up series we're going to continue i hope challenging you with profound truths many of them recent scientific and historical findings that may affect the course of your life as hannah just shared um, i wanted this short documentary series to, to be a challenge but with a very positive hopeful outcome at the opening of video two here you watched a brief slide run taking you from space to Earth. In video one, we started with glimpses of our awesome universe. Here, we're focused on the miracle of life on this amazing planet. As we proceed, we'll assume that you may have at some point in your life asked yourself some version of three profoundly important questions. How did I get here? then why am I even here? Perhaps the most vital. Where am I going? Well, we're gonna be addressing aspects of these crucial life issues. with us and keep thinking. 
Yeah, that's what we challenged you to do right from the start of our first video in this Wake Up series. And by the way, it's just a sort of gentle challenge. The content here is not for everyone, only those watching who have wondered about why they are here, where they are headed, and the most unnerving one yet to be explored in our final video. Where are you out in eternity? You know, consider the facts. Stunning scientific discoveries over the last hundred years or so abound in this field of study. We'll now be shifting into a more uniquely personal and universal reality facing every living human being. And that would be, of course, that often dreaded moment of life's end. This next section, therefore, might be a little disturbing, perhaps stirring a few unwanted emotions in some, but I urge you to stay with it. Daily life for many of us is difficult enough to navigate. Thoughts of death are even more unsettling. Human nature is bent toward fearing and therefore running from thoughts about those last moments of life. Death, or the fear of it, has been described as the great equalizer. What you're about to read could be a vital wake-up call. There's probably a few of you out there willing to ponder your life's overall meaning a bit. If there are a few of you here and you're still aboard with us in this wake up series, this is for you. We think it's time to begin considering the unsettling topic of what may or may not come after your last heartbeat. Ever think of that? much more meaningful and encouraging quote by someone who has transcended all our questionable earthly wisdom. He said, quote, I have come so that they may have life and to have it to the full. That was Jesus Christ in the Gospel of John. Okay, but how do I know there really is an afterlife, you might ask? And if there truly is, what kind of evidence could there be of such an afterlife? And related to that, you might ask, what's going to happen to me? Or where will I possibly be one second after my death? The profound teachings and claims of Jesus Christ recorded in the Bible could be true. Well, perhaps it's now time for us to ask you to make an assumption. It's one you may never have seriously thought of doing before. We would simply ask you to consider the facts supporting what is widely thought to be the most unique and influential book of the last nearly two millennia, the Bible.
that Jesus not only claimed to be the Son of God, but he backed it up by returning from the dead. Christian testimonies abound in books and on the internet of ordinary people coming out of darkened, miserable personal states and being transformed by their stories of repentance and faith. Woven throughout the scriptures, as in a beautifully intricate tapestry, are the colorful threads of human life, real experiences, and eyewitness accounts of supernatural events. The Bible is a strong example of unity out of diversity. The 66 books in the biblical anthology were all written within accurately described historical settings. We have been attempting to make the case via the strong evidences we've shared that only a small hop of faith into the light is needed to believe. Jesus Christ gave us an incredible gift, the gift of forgiveness and redemption. That is really the crux of the whole of the gospel message contained in the scriptures. Thank God that his Bible doesn't pull any punches. He says this, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. And as for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live. But I thank God he didn't leave us in that condition. He made a means of escape. He offers us an incredibly wonderful hope, an unimaginable gift, and that is the gift of His own Son. That hope comes when God opens our eyes for the first time to that deep, deep realization of our need for a Savior. so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life